What horrid secrets do your parents have, and are oblivious to you being aware of? Someone tried to kill my father when he was in his teens. He has scars on his head from where he was beat with a hammer. He doesn't know that I know this and I only know because I overheard a conversation between my grandmother and her brothers about the incident. My dad had a similar situation. Has a couple soft spots on his head from being bashed with a brick for supposedly sleeping with a co-worker's wife. In the military, he wasn't. I found out from my mom, his wife at the time, now ex, that he eventually did sleep with her as a frick you. My dad died when I was 14 and everyone refused to speak of it. My grandparents said he fell down the stairs, and they've maintained that to this day. My mom told me that he accidentally hung himself and she tell me when I was older. It took 9th grade me all of about 3 days to figure out he had died of autoerotic asphyxiation. She confirmed it years later. My 15 year old brother did this when I was 8. I think I was about his age when I learned what had actually happened. Was able to stop a couple of my high school buddies from doing the same by telling them the story. My mom had to do some soul searching for AA. She wrote a list called life resentments and having kids was the first bullet point. Found it while I was looking for my social security card to apply for my first job at 16. She kept it in a safe. To be fair, resenting having kids is pretty normal. It doesn't mean she resents you personally. My mother told me the scars on her arm were from an accident but they were clearly from one or multiple suicide attempts. I knew when I asked, but I'll let her lie. My dad used to talk about growing up really poor, having to get food from food banks, etc. It's one of the reasons that now that he owns his own business, he donates to food banks and all sorts of charities all the time. Paying it back, well, it turns out that my father's father owned a massive construction company, and made millions of dollars, in the 50s and 60s. My uncle was selling massive amounts of sea, and got busted. My grandfather bankrupted himself paying off judges and lawyers and all that to keep my uncle out of jail for most of his life. That's why my dad grew up with nothing. He has no idea that I know. Seriously sounds like an arrested development style story. Glad your dad ended up alright. I've been dating one of my parents employee for almost a year now. For personal reasons we decided to hide it from them. My father and my girlfriend always had a good relationship. Few weeks ago my father went by her apartment and told her that my mother and him didn't have sex anymore. You guess what he came for. Obviously my girlfriend told him that there is no way she would do that to my mother. So now I know that my father is actively looking for someone to cheat on my mother with. My parents divorced when I was 6, after which I lived with my mom. When I was 10 years old, I found a list my dad had written of things that could save their marriage, including more oral sex, anal, wife swapping, never spoke about that to them. One year my family went on vacation where I took a lot of pictures using my dad's phone and I wanted to put them on my computer so I could share them with friends. I grabbed his phone and stated looking through his photos looking for my vacation photos when I came across my dad and mom sex tape, nudes, etc. I never told them I found it, nor do I go back on his phone because I don't want to see those ever again. I was fixing my dad's laptop a while later and my mom kept hovering over my shoulder telling me not to snoop through his files and don't go on anything except for what I needed to. I knew what she was hiding, but I wasn't going to tell her. This gives me a good idea. When my kids are older and fixing my stuff I'll tell them not to go through my files unless they want to see me naked. My father's side of the family is riddled with a grab bag of severe mental illnesses. My father and his older brother in particular got the lion's share. While my father has a progressively worsening, untreated paranoid schizophrenia, NPD, ECT, his brother is likely a bona fide psychopath and sexual miscreant. When we were 11 12 me and my cousin, Psycho's son, spent a summer together because my parents were on the outs and my uncle had a large house in the country and I fit right in with their gang of kids. It was awesome. I spent a whole summer running barefoot in an idyllic Indiana sleepy nowhere town. Right before school was starting back up and I was about to go back to live with my parents, I was helping my uncle and cousin clear up some old farm junk left by the previous owners behind the barn. 
My cousin cut himself on rusty farm equipment and my uncle sent him back to the house to have his mom clean him up and maybe go get stitches. When we were alone and saw my cousin get driven to town to get stitches with the other kids in tow, my uncle took me into the barn and molested me. I never told anyone and found out years later that my dad knew his brother was like that and shipped me off to spend a summer with him because my uncle paid my dad in cash to take me off of his hands for a few months. Expenses paid at the price of having free reign to abuse me. I don't know what price my childhood had, but I came back to my parents having a new working vehicle and my siblings had new clothes, shoes, and school supplies which wasn't common. What the actual freak. I know that my mom got pregnant at 15 on purpose. She was constantly being shuttled between early 80s foster care and her own terrible family, and she felt like her only way to escape was to get emancipated through marriage. She knew my dad from school, and thought he'd make the perfect husband. Smart, funny, from a seemingly good family, and he had protected her several times. So she seduced him, knowing their parents would insist on marriage if she got knocked up, and she did. Unfortunately for her, he turned out to be a drug dealing, mentally ill teenager from a dysfunctional alcoholic family. The marriage lasted only a few months, but she did get her escape. My mom has no idea that I know this, and she'd be devastated if she knew. I know my dad cheated on my mom several times using a AOL. How 90s is that? He would talk with women online and never mention how he was married or that he had two children. When my mom was out at work or asleep, he would call these women up and flirt, have phone sex, etc. He would make excuses as to why he couldn't meet with them, but continue to pretend like he was super into them and really did want to meet them. I only put it together later once I remembered coming into my dad's office while he was working and seeing nothing but aim chat rooms with women's names. There were a couple times I woke up at night and heard him talking to someone in a hushed voice in our kitchen and I knew my mom wasn't up. The real clincher was when I started to walk downstairs while my parents were arguing. My mom shouted, you don't even have sex with me. You're so much more interested in playing games, talking to women online, and pretending like your children and I don't freaking exist. I heard a pause and then he tried to play dumb, to which he responded, don't lie to me. I see the phone records. I called one of them and she told me everything. I have never so promptly turned around. Went back to my room, and pretended to be fascinated by Mr. Potato Head so fast in my life. Mom never talked about it or let on that it happened. Neither of them had any idea I overheard them or put the pieces together. I've never told my brother. Edited to add, they are no longer together. They got divorced shortly after when my mom found out that while she had been working three jobs, he had been sitting at home, not doing anything to find a job, racking up a ton of debt and secretly bought himself a motorcycle which he kept in a storage unit away from home. She came home early, grabbed the mail before he could, saw the dead notices, then opened the garage and found a shiny motorcycle sitting there. He hadn't had time to return it to the storage unit because he wasn't thinking she'd come home early. That was that. Comma I have never so promptly turned around, went back to my room, and pretended to be fascinated by Mr. Potato Head so fast in my life. God, have I had these moments in my life, lol. My dad is now with a woman he was cheating on my mom with, before she died from cancer. When I was a child, we used to be semi close to my dad's family, my grandparents came up, 2 plus hour drive, to talk to my parents about an adult issue and 10 year old me was told to stay in my room with the door shut. After that, we never spoke to them again. Except for one letter that I got from them expressing sympathy when my other grandmother, who I was very close to, passed away. I had no idea what happened. Years later, I found a cousin on Facebook and we happened to go to the same college, so we met for coffee. I found out that the reason we no longer spoke was because my mom opened a whole bunch of credit cards and racked up a bunch of debts in my grandma's name that she never had any intention of paying back. My cousin and I kept it between us and she has no idea I know. Watch the frick out. My friend's parents have put cars in his name before he was even 18 so that his credit takes the hit when they don't pay for them. Your mom may not be above pulling similar crap. Found this out from my dad's old college roommate as my dad has never wanted to talk about this with me. 
Pops was working in the financial district during 9-11 and was in charge of emergency evacuation for his floor, way high up in one of the bank buildings. Saw the towers fall and had to herd everyone off his floor and out of the building. Apparently someone had a heart attack and collapsed behind their desk. He didn't find this person and they ended up dying there in the office. I think my dad might blame himself at least partially which, on top of the trauma of witnessing the towers fall first hand, has led him to locking that part of himself away from the world. One day I want to tell him it wasn't his fault and he did the best he could. I went to my parents room to wake them up to drop me off to school. I saw them out cold lying naked with a dildo on the edge of the bed. I was 15. My dad doesn't know that I know how my grandfather, his dad, died. I had always wondered why I never knew my grandfather but it was always a touchy subject so I never asked. I knew my dad basically grew up without his father but I never knew why. When I was about 22 or 23 my brother told me what had happened. My grandfather had committed suicide in front of my dad when my dad was about 8 or 9 years old. Even though I know now, I still won't bring it up. My biological dad died when I was 2, car accident going to his next duty station, and not too long ago I got a box of letters he had sent my aunt, uncle and his parents. Since he died when I was so young, I didn't really know him that well, but this treasure trove of letters gave me some real insight into who he was. It was a lot of letters from the time he was in the navy before he married my mom, all the way up to not long before he died. In one set of letters he discusses with my grandparents how he and my mom aren't getting along. He mentions that they might get a divorce, but he wanted their help in getting custody of me. I think mostly because my mom was born and raised in Ireland and not yet a true citizen of the US so he was afraid he'd never see me again if I went with her. Apparently she was fine with him taking me, the reconciled. But it's interesting to know that she would have given me up and I'd have grown up in LA instead of with her, ultimately on the east coast of the US. It's amazing that you got to know him through the letters though. I hope you take away the fact that he obviously loved you if he wanted custody of you. I hope you are able to reach out to his side of the family to get to know more of him. I want to preface this by saying I was adopted. My dad was 18 and wanted one last romp with my mom. 17. Before shipping off to the military. This is where I come from. She decided to adopt me out so we could both have act. He never stopped loving me or thinking about me. I haven't told my adoptive mom I know they hid these, and I may never. My dad doesn't know that I found paperwork of his from when he got discharged from the military and diagnosed with borderline personality disorder with narcissistic features. Everything about his behavior suddenly made sense but there was literally no way to bring it up to him without making him extremely, more, defensive or shutting down on me. It did give me peace of mind though, and helped me work through a lot of trauma on my end after years of emotional gaslighting. Don't know if it's horrid, but when helping my mother move from one house to another, I happened across her bag of sex toys, which isn't all that shocking, but it included a strap-on dildo, the bag was open and it was on top. She'd been a single woman for 20 plus years and was in her late 50s at the time. I had no idea who she was using it with nor do I want to know. If it's any help strap-ons can be used to wrap them around pillows so you can ride them. For a woman with a bag of sex toys that doesn't seem too far of a stretch. Well, my father sends me letters from prison assuming I haven't heard the phone recordings where he admits to child rape. I burn everything he sends me. Also, I corroborated several claims against him when interviewed by the detective. Welp there's a few but it ties into one. To start I found out my dad switches partners faster than Zeus. I came from a broken home at a young age and every leap year I would end up with a new stepmom. Everything would be nice then poof things didn't work out. Let's give Denver a try, or maybe Aurora turns out he will cheat on his current wife for years with other women until they caught on and when the current wife kicked him out he would move in with new wifey. Well through the years of cheating he gathered 10 kids, I'm the 5th child, 3rd son. So I decided I'd ask my older siblings if they made the same connection. Turns out my father has been doing this since he was in high school. Same pattern, same timing, just before me. Welp now he's 50 years old on Wifu 10. Oh and the child count is on 11. He made another one. Bonus, 
Usually around our 16 birthdays, we start to make the connection that none of our siblings look alike. So one of the elder siblings take them for a drive and break the news. It usually ends with that explains a lot. I feel like the breaking of the news must be a one of us invitation. When my grandfather died he left approx 140k dollar sign American in a trust for me. It wasn't to be touched until after my parents passed away so that it could gain as much money as possible from the investments he had arranged. My grandfather was an oil tycoon in PA and no one in the family knew it until after he died. I got a call from the bank one day asking how I'd like to handle closing the accounts. I had no idea why, but apparently my parents had been taking medical bills from themselves and altering them to have my name on them, then submitting them to the bank to be reimbursed for paying my medical bills. They had bled the trust completely dry in less than 5 years. They used the money to remodel their home. I don't think I have any recourse, but whatever, I'm 35 and I have my own retirement. It just makes me mad that they would steal from me like that. You have recourse but you might not like it. Report them for criminal fraud. Not some horrid secret, but I sometimes hear my dad talking behind closed doors to my mom who passed away suddenly years ago. He typically tells her our life updates and that he misses her. My sister got married recently and I overheard him from outside his room telling my mom how beautiful my sister looked and how great her husband is that she never had the chance to meet. About how they had always spoke of that moment watching their child marry, and he wished she was there with him to see us. We rarely speak about my mom at home, but 14 years later she's still very alive in his heart. It's gut-wrenching at times. I found my dad's Yahoo! Personals profile, featuring a picture of him bent over in our living room wearing nothing but assless chaps, profile name Hot Rider for you, and it was taken with my camera. We only had one in the house, but for some reason I decided to check the exif, just hoping, never mentioned that one to him or my mother. My mother, she's been the cause of many of my problems through school with bullying, she thinks she's a reptilian witch here to save the world with her psychic prowess, literally, as she ended up dating a classmate's father who found out about this and thus spread this information in nasty instances to ostracize me, belittle me, and make me feel utterly worthless. I wanted to kill myself at times, and as a young fricked up individual I reflected my current self hatred onto her, but kept it to myself. I festered in that quite hate for what she caused my life to be. Why couldn't my mother be normal? Then came the realization one day when me and my father were alone and drinking the night away. He let me know about the evil and vile things my grandfather had done to her and her sister as a child. That he thought he could help her to be the wondrous beautiful woman she really is and was. He couldn't. No amount of love and compassion can make up for 15 years of senseless rape and abuse. She has no idea I know. And that I also know this world she's made up in her head of fantasy and magic is to protect herself and cope the only way she ever knew how. I've never seen a picture of my grandfather in my life. Last year she tried to show me one and couldn't understand why I rejected the idea so heavily. I would beat that man's lifeless body until my hands broke for what the lives he's destroyed and affected. I'm a strong and capable individual now through these experiences. My mother will never be who she could have been. It's not her fault. She did everything she knew and did it to her best. I love you mom. This is so sad. You have a very loving heart. I hope you're doing okay these days. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.